hello everyone welcome back uh, last class we were dealing with the heart of oblique shocks primarily how to look at oblique shocks and what is the connection between the deflection angle and the shock angle for a given Mach number etc. Uh, today we will go into one aspect which we did not finish oh, but before that I just want to recap a little bit. Uh, we drew these pictures for any given uh, beta and we found that we can make the same theta happen for different beta values. The way we drew it if I continue the same procedure I can draw for 10 more beta values, but only two of those actually there is only specific two of those will match with the u 2 normal divided by u 1 normal from normal shock tables. Okay. So, all the other things we can follow the procedure and get more of them, but only two of them are exact correct solutions of which the one with higher beta is the strong solution one with lower beta is the weak solution. Okay. And uh, we looked at uh, in a weak solution uh, it is changing kinetic energy very little in the strong solution it is changing most of the kinetic energy into internal energy those were the details we saw and then finally we said that uh, we can use p 0 2 by p 0 1 from normal shock tables as such to get p 0 2 by p 0 1 for oblique shocks, but I would advise you not to use that because it will cause a lot of confusion okay. that is all. Uh, it is safer to go by just finding Mach number and P 2 and from there M 2 and P 2 you can find P 0 2 from isentropic tables that is a safer way to find P 0 2. Otherwise if you happen to have this other column which I have in my gas tables P 0 2 by P 1 that will not give you the correct value. Okay. So, just to avoid confusion we will just follow a single procedure which will always be safe which is we will not use P 0 2 by P 0 1 from uh, normal shock tables to obtain P 0 2 by P 0 1 for oblique shocks can be used for normal shocks ok. Now, we will continue along the lines of yesterday and uh, we will go back to the original picture this is our shock angle there was a 90 degree and uh, 0 here this is your deflection angle theta and uh, there is no limit for this I will just draw a particular case. I drew slightly over beyond this this is a little better than that something like this and we said that for any given theta there will be two solutions the weak solution and the strong solution and we found that this was mu for that particular Mach number for which you have drawn the line and this is 90 degree which corresponds to normal shock solution. Now, we have to look at there is a particular theta above which there is no solution for oblique shocks there is no solution for a beta value above this okay. that means there is something special happening above this point what will happen. So, you will go draw that picture of a oblique shock happening if I consider this this is my theta typically we will have a shock like this with an angle beta okay, and the flow vector will come like this will turn and go parallel to this wall. I am saying it is a wall it need not be a wall it could be a stream tube it could be anything just all I care about is the streamline turning like this wall is very easy to work with. So, we will just remember it as a wall it is easier to tell okay. now I am deflecting and it is a sudden corner. Okay, it is a sudden corner people call it sudden change in angle it is a slope is discontinuous there okay. and this is what I will have and I have drawn it such that the this vector is very long this vector is short okay, it is consistent with theory okay. and this is for some particular m. Now, if I for this particular m curve if I go look at the theta beta for a particular Mach number I will find that it has a theta critical theta maximum what if I keep on increasing this theta I will draw one more. let us say the deflection angle for the wall is theta greater than theta max if such a thing happens then the shock will not be along this line starting from this corner but it will be detached from this corner and it will sit like this okay. it will be close to a normal shock at the bottom 
and as it goes out it will turn out like a bow shock. We saw an example of a bow shock in one of the videos some two classes back. Okay. So it will look something like that. Okay. Now the flow here is going to come straight it is going to see that it is almost a normal shock actually very close to the wall it is a normal shock. So the flow will just go straight and the flow here will be subsonic as we know from normal shock the flow downstream is subsonic and somewhere here if I pick this point it is an oblique shock locally with that particular beta value and here there will be a deflection like this. When I go far away if I go up to very long distances out I may go to a point where this angle is very close to Mach angle for that particular Mach number that is it is a very weak wave finally. It starts as a very strong wave for the given Mach number this is the strongest possible compression wave that is your normal shock as it goes out it is getting weaker and weaker and it goes to a point where P2 by P1 equal to 1 at very far distances from this change okay, I am telling you again from this change only everything matters very close to this change there is a normal shock far away from the change its effect is lesser P2 by P1 effect will be lesser is a simple way of looking at it. If I look at it from a point of view of there is a wedge shaped body in flow I am considering 2D flow if I have some particular semi angle less than theta max then I will have an attached shock like this this is my body and there will be attached shock like this the streamline that is coming here will turn around and go like this here the streamline will come here and go like this okay. this is just a mirror image problem so I will not worry too much about this turn it is you can convert it to be a minus theta and a minus beta it will work fine okay. so that is this case. Uh, if I have theta greater than theta max here and I have a problem like this flow incoming is having a Mach number m and it is uniform and uh, what we will see will be a bow shock similar to what we saw over in front of a sphere in the video two weeks back uh, two classes back okay. it will look something like this okay. and there is a particular detachment distance this detachment distance depends on the gamma value depends on how long is this straight line is it going forever if it is going forever it will uh, it will be a particular value if it is stopping somewhere after some distance like in a missile or something if it turns becomes straight after some time then this will be a little closer and uh, it is related to where the shoulder is shoulder of this wedge okay. we will not worry too much about it that is not related to our problem. Now I want to look at let us say this particular case I will pick what is happening in here when I go to some case here last class we said that uh, strong shocks do not have occur in uh, steady problems okay. that is only for attached shocks okay. now I will qualify that statement again now okay. last class we said we have strong shock solution and weak shock solution strong shock solution is proven to be unstable and it will not occur in a steady problem that assumed that I am going to have a deflection like this where it is a attached oblique shock if it is a bow shock it so happens that I am having a normal shock here and as I go up it is going to go to from 90 degree beta angle to something less than 90 slightly less than 90 so it is going to go from 90 to 85, 80, 70, 75, 60 whatever all the numbers will be there and uh, far away if I extend this very far away somewhere far out it will become Mach angle for this particular Mach number okay. which means if I go back to that curve again for my bow shock at the center line it is here and it is sweeping through the whole curve for that particular Mach number it is having all the compression waves possible in this curve it is going to have all solutions in this okay. that is one observation we want to make okay. now the uh, one more thing I will just tell from here is 
if I look at it, it starts with M1 normal very very high and it goes all the way to M1 normal 1, okay. M1 normal will become 1 that is it is not going to have any P2 by P1, okay. it is going to go through this whole sequence M1 normal very high to M1 normal nothing, M1 normal equal to M it will start with that is 90 degrees right sin beta will become 1 and I am going to end with sin beta equal to 1. So, I will end up with uh, uh, sin beta will become 1 by m 1, so it will become 1, m 1 normal will become 1, okay. we will end with that. Okay. Uh, if I look at uh, m 2, the Mach number behind the shock, it starts with subsonic, it is going to go, we already had this dotted line we drew last time, it was going like this, we said this is m 2 equal to 1 line and we said this is our theta max line we had two curves like this going across different Mach number lines. So, if I think about it, it starts with very low subsonic, this is the strongest shock very low subsonic and it is going slightly higher and higher Mach number and then up to here it is it is becoming m equal to 1 at this point that particular beta value it will be m equal to 1. After that it is decreasing, uh, it is further increasing to supersonic values up to a point where it becomes finally m 2 equal to m 1 goes all the way to there. Yeah, that is it is a Mach wave where there is no change, so m2 equal to m1 becomes that, it goes from the whole spectrum. Okay. The next thing I want to look at theta value, this is more difficult, theta value is 0 initially but near the center, as it goes up it is increasing, increasing, increasing goes up to the maximum value possible for that Mach number theta max and then it drops again and goes to 0 again. Now, I want to draw this picture, actually I will have this picture, I will erase the top picture, I do not want to draw this so much. Okay. So, I have this picture where I am having theta greater than theta max, so I am having a detached shock sitting here and let us say it is going all the way up to oblique uh, whatever uh, Mach wave somewhere here, let us say this is my Mach wave line. If this is my mu, then the streamline that is coming here does not change, it just goes straight that is far away from the change okay. and very close to the change we said it is 90 degrees beta. So, it is going to be just going straight normal shock, somewhere here it has a small theta, so it will turn a little bit. Let us say this is my beta corresponding to theta max this particular thing let us call it, uh, I will just put this arrow and call it theta max, okay. the deflection at that particular line I do not know where it is, it is somewhere that particular line will be theta max. After that now I am going to have again decreasing streamline angles, okay. that fine I will leave that one, we will draw the next one with lesser angle. something like this, ideally I am supposed to draw these vector lengths also correct. We know that this will be the lowest and as it goes up the velocity increases, so vector length should be increasing from here all the way up to there where it becomes same length as that all the way together. Now, if I look at this area, this one line has the highest theta on both sides it has lower theta which means this one will want to go crash into this streamline that is there is extra compression happening after the shock, okay. there is something more happening after the shock here, okay. such things are also possible. In most cases somewhere up to here will be subsonic flow inside this region, okay. why am I saying that the theta max will be in subsonic range, we go back to the curve, theta max is sitting in a point where m2 is subsonic okay that's all i'm saying and uh, slightly below theta max on the beta lower side is where you will have m2 equal to 1 happening the only point where m2 equal to 1 touches the theta max is at m equal to infinity we won't go there okay. and of course m equal to 0 also when there is no flow no no shock we won't worry about it okay. so i'm having this whole region inside here inside this curve 
all the way inside this whole range is all subsonic flow. Okay. All this time when I had this nice attached shock condition, the flow could adjust to this change that is change in streamline direction by just having one attached shock that was enough. Okay. Just change in angle of the flow direction and that was enough just having one oblique shock. If I had the change too strong, then it has to change very, very fast which is not possible for a fluid. So, what it does is it makes the flow go to subsonic, has a velocity very, very slow, temperature very, very high. So, speed of sound is very high, velocity is very low. So, it will have very nice feedback in here to adjust to the situation. Okay. What happens is after this, the flow has become subsonic and then now the subsonic flow knows where the fluid is. If I think about steady state, where the wall is sorry, where the wall is, if I am thinking about steady state problem, we are considering only steady state problem, final state. We will deal with a shock forming in front of a oblique shock, uh, in front of a wedge towards the end of this course, currently no. Okay. And uh, what will happen is this, if I just look at this region of the flow after the shock, it looks as if there is a subsonic flow over a wedge. What should it do? It will just start turning like this and go very slowly it will start turning. It is subsonic flow anyway. It can find its own way to adjust. It will do something like this and adjust. It will have region of contracting stream, stream tubes. What does that mean? Subsonic and stream tube contracting, area decreasing, subsonic Mach number, Mach number will increase. Okay. That is also happening in here. So, we are accelerating the flow here. Okay. That is why this dotted line which is corresponding to sonic line, we, the, we call it the sonic line which is nothing but m equal to 1 there along that line. I will go to a point where m equal to 1 sits here okay. and after that the flow is supersonic. Okay. It so happens that typically I will have to modify this picture such that the m equal to 2 line, m, m, m equal to 1 line will end on the shoulder of this body. Typically that is where it stops. Okay. If it is the other way, it will find it unstable. Okay. This is the only place where it will find it easy to adjust. Okay. So, it will typically be sitting here if it is a wedge problem, okay. something like this. Okay. So, we have to think about what is happening inside here. Of course, I already gave you the answer, streamlines, stream tubes are coming closer and closer after the shock, it becomes subsonic and it is coming closer and closer, which means it is going to accelerate again, go to supersonic condition. Once it goes supersonic here, there is something more that will happen here which we have not explained, we will come back to that, the flow has to turn back here along the wall, we will come back to that later, okay. next class onwards we will deal with that. Okay. So, when I go here this streamline is going to accelerate to go there. There is something more which I had to talk about uh, let us say towards the last one third of the class of course, where I will talk about this region having a lot of vorticity in it. Okay. It is not a simple flow. All this time we ignored any rotational flow. We said our flow is completely irrotational. We do not need to worry about any of those del cross terms. Actually, we just said mu equal to 0 even if there was del cross terms, we would not worry about it that was what we said. Okay. Now, we will just say that this flow is very rotational behind this bow shock okay. and we will just leave it there, we will not do anything more about that. And I said that uh, depending on how far this shoulder is from the starting point, the curve will shift. Okay. If I had a case, I will draw there. Let us say I will draw only one side, I will not worry about the other side. If I had a case like this, then let us say my bow shock is like this and my m2 equal to 1 line is here. If I had another case where it goes beyond and then turns, if I had this case, it will most likely be looking like this. There will be a higher standoff distance and this whole region will be filled with subsonic flow inside here. Of course, the flow becomes supersonic after some time even for this streamline. The streamline that comes here will turn 
accelerate to supersonic at this point it becomes sonic and then it is supersonic it does that okay we won't worry about that for the moment we we'll just leave it like this okay and uh, one more thing i just want to point out the streamline that's going here is processed by a different shock compared to the streamline that's going here compared to the streamline that's going here which means each of them will have different entropy jumps across of course, we can easily say that uh, m 1 normal the normal Mach number is the highest it is equal to m 1 here and as it goes up it is m 1 m, m 1 normal equal to 1 it becomes as it goes out far which means the strength of the shock or the delta s the increase in entropy will be highest here as it goes up the entropy increase is lesser and lesser and lesser ok. One more observation we will not do much with it currently we will come back to it after some time. Now, uh, I just wanted to tell you something extra, so that you will have a little more physical feel for this ok. Of course, I, I cannot give you very good physical feel, because it involves math after some time. So, anyways we will try it a little bit ok. I wanted to give you a slight feel for why will there be two solutions ok. If I keep on increasing my beta value from say Mach angle to very high angles, the theta will keep on increasing up to some time and then it will start decreasing again. We want to see why, ok. That is the goal. It is easier done if I go to my fixed normal shock, which is vertical, and an observer is moving with velocity v here, the very first thing we did with oblique shock class, ok. We will start with this and we will say that. Uh, I am going to have a particular incoming Mach number m 1 irrespective of what beta I have for the shock, which means my v 1 value is a fixed value, v 1 is fixed, it is v 1 by a 1 is my Mach number m 1 ok and I am saying incoming gas is having a particular speed of sound a 1, we are starting with that. Let us say we are considering the vector that is going through that point, I will take this as the length of my vector v 1 ok. And uh, if I want to change the beta, it is going to be beta is what beta is nothing but this angle right. The angle the shock makes with respect to the incoming streamline that was beta right. In here we said this angle is beta ok, that was our beta locally the shock makes this angle with respect to the incoming streamline. So, here this is my incoming streamline shock is making this angle. So, I am having very low beta value of course, I cannot have very low beta value close to 0 minimum possible is mu we proved it last class ok. Below that it will go entropy less than 0 ok. So, there is a minimum possible let us say this is our close to minimum possible it is slightly more than mu we will keep it like this. The other possibilities will be the vector can be here oh I have to draw the vector other way ok. This can be my vector and I have to make sure that the lengths are the same. So, I will draw a circle along this with that as center So, it has to be this length it is not a good circle, but it is reasonable something like this and I can have close to normal that will be a shock like this. So, that will be a streamline like this with respect to the shock something. We want to see what happens in these three cases. Let us pick this particular case the lowest beta value. What I have to do is just go and uh, draw the normal component and the tangential component. For this small this smaller beta value thing, you find that the u1 normal is very very small. This is my u1 normal for that case. Okay. If this is the u1 normal, the change will not be very high because the m1 normal is exactly the same for all the cases. Okay. The change is not going to be very high, okay. or even if there is a change, the velocity vector say I multiply by 0.5, then I am going to say this vector is going to become only this length. 
the normal velocity vector tangential is still going to be the exact same length okay so i'll erase this v because it's confusing i have to draw roughly the same length okay let us say this is my u2 normal i just guessed a value something that is smaller than this u1 normal so now my final velocity vector oh, i have i am curving i'll come from there this will be my final velocity vector if you look at it there is a very small change but it's not very perceptible okay there is a small change if i extend it it has changed by this much this vector if i extend it it will go along this line and it has changed by a little bit okay that's a small theta value let's go to the other extreme this highest beta currently we are considering here normal component is very high this whole thing is normal component and this is my tangential component okay in this case for this shock the incoming velocity is very very high which means it will drop very high okay it's a very high incoming flow it's going to drop very high uh, unless i use the normal shock tables i cannot exactly tell what the value will be i'm going to guess again uh i'll pick the tangential value to be somewhere here it should be the same length here and then the normal let us say i'll put somewhere here i don't know where it should be i'll consider this to be my u2 normal for this case so i'll end with this and that value is somewhere here now again i have to find the deflection in the streamline so i have to extend the original streamline this is my theta for this case okay the way i have drawn it it looks like this is slightly bigger than this now we'll go to the next case the next case is something in between and i am assuming this is going to be close to your theta max somewhere i don't know where exactly so i'll draw the normal and the tangential on this now this is somewhere here this length same tangential that will be here this line now i have to look at the shock strength it is going to be some u2 by u1 in between this case and this case okay here the u2 by u1 we said was roughly half in the other case it looks like it is uh, that full amount is covered in 1 2 3 4 1/4 so let's pick 1/3 for this case u u2 by u1 is 1/3 let's say in this case okay if i pick that then it's going to be that distance somewhere here i'm having so many confusing plots here but that's the only way i can explain this i missed it slightly it's okay we'll just take it like this it's going to be this particular case i'll number it 1 1 we said this was our 2 2 this is our 3 now this is our 3 what we are finding here is this one extends somewhere here this is my theta here what we are seeing is when i have one i have a low theta when i have two i have somewhat less theta compared to three okay i am going from lowest angle possible for beta to 90 degrees as i go what we are finding is theta is increasing and decreasing okay am i giving you complete physical feel not exactly okay so i'll give you a better example by just going to math a little bit of math i want to find this angle theta how will i find it it's just tan inverse of this vector components divided by uh, minus the tan inverse of this vector components right that so i'll just write it directly tan inverse of v by u2 normal 
minus tan inverse of same v divided by u 1 normal. Okay. This is the formula we are having for that, right. it is a simple enough formula. Of course, we know that the v is the same, but v depends on beta. Okay. How does v depend on beta? v is equal to v 1 cos beta. We can of course, find it out, it is not that difficult, we, we wrote it for Mach number before. Now, I will write uh, u 1 normal is v 1 sin beta, this is how you got m 1 normal equal to m 1 sin beta from here. Anyways. So, if I say my beta increases, if my beta increases and beta is somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees, if beta increases cos beta decreases, we said fixed v 1. Right. So, v decreases okay. here v 1 is fixed 0 to 90 degrees sin will keep on increasing. So, if beta increases u 1 normal increases now I will go look at this term okay. v by u 1 v by u 1 normal if my beta increases v by u 1 normal will decrease, because denominator is increasing, numerator is decreasing simple enough okay. and tan inverse is a monotonic function, I have to draw that also here, I will draw it here, this is some x and this is tan inverse x, this function is going to look something like this, it is close to 45, I think it is 45 at the 0 point and it is going to go like this this is the function for tan inverse of x, where x is your angle, uh, x is your number and this is your angle. Yeah, right, okay. So, x can go anywhere from 0 to infinity. So, what we are seeing is if beta increases, this quantity decreases, which means I am going this way on this line, what we will find is tan inverse of that quantity will decrease, which means I have a tendency for increase in theta based on this, if I increase beta my theta will increase that is one aspect. Okay. Now, we will go to the other one, v is still the same v 1 cos beta good enough we will keep it that way, okay. I can also say it is v 2 cos uh, nah, let us not worry about it v 2 cos beta minus theta it is not complex. I will write it now u 2 what happens to u 2 normal, if u 1 normal increases okay, that is the idea, u 2 normal is uh, actually we have a function for u 2 by u 1, we will just keep it like this u 2 normal by u 1 normal is equal to gamma minus 1 m 1 normal square plus 2 divided by actually I am getting too cluttered here, I will write it all in the next place, next board okay. u 2 normal by u 1 normal equal to this is same as normal shock formula m 1 normal square plus 2 divided by gamma plus 1 m 1 normal square. I can regroup this such that it will become something like a plus b by m 1 normal square, okay. it will just become that, I will divide the numerator denominator by m 1 normal square, it will just become something like this, okay. the where the a will become gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 and b will become 2 by gamma plus 1 okay, and you will get to this point. Okay. So, now I want to write it as u 2 normal equal to u 1 normal into let us say I want to write this m 1 normal in terms of u 1 normal. Of course, it will become a prime plus b prime by u 1 normal u 1 normal square. So, this looks like a prime u 1 normal plus c by u 1 normal something like this. This is not a simple function in u 1 normal that is what is our problem currently. Okay. Now, if I say my u 1 normal increases, why am I saying u 1 normal increases? Beta increases, 
we go back to the previous board where we said that if beta increases u1 normal increases from here i'm going to use this okay beta increases u1 normal increases and because when u1 normal increases i can probably say that u2 normal increases if this term is dominant okay if the if linear term is dominant okay or uh, if u1 is high i'll tell it that way if u1 normal high if this is very high then 1 by u1 normal will be very small then this term will become dominant okay that's easy way to look at it. if not u to normal decreases if u and normal low if it is low then this ratio will be very high and this will be very low okay then it will go the other way okay so now this is not a simple thing and this is what is causing all this reversal in theta okay uh, we go back to our theta formula actually i want to show this whole thing hopefully we'll show the whole board this end up to here now if i have we already showed that if i increase beta the second term will always decrease that's monotonic we saw that if that decreases theta should increase now i'll go and look at the other one i'm going to say if beta increases if my u1 normal is high if my u1 normal is high if u1 normal is high means my beta is high okay if beta is high then u2 normal increases v anyway drops okay v always drops that we have it here okay v drops u2 normal increases which means this term decreases okay if this decreases and this decreases now i don't know where it will go but based on numbers u2 normal normal is less than u1 normal so this is more than this but the difference is decreasing okay so i'm going to end up with a case where theta will decrease okay so like that it's a, it's a little more complex i won't get to get you any more physical feel than this okay this is the closest i can get to okay. after this it is all math okay. you can probably you have to go and draw the functions out by yourself once and then only figure out the physical intuition from here it's not very easy to get the full physical feel that's why I st that's what i told when i started also okay that being said i want to give you a feel for what happens when i change gamma okay let's uh, not discuss any more about this this is the best i can give you there we'll go and change gamma and we'll see what happens okay. uh, let's go to the screen first then it's easier to finish off with the screen then we'll come back to here okay what i have plotted is deflection angle versus beta same as our theta versus beta curve and uh, i have drawn it for two different mach numbers 1.5 and 3 for each mach number i have drawn it for three different gamma values 1.3 on the top 1.4 in the middle 1.67 in the bottom okay of course all of them reach at 90 degrees at the corner okay and uh, when i look at each individual plot it looks like whatever we have been seeing all this time i just want to see the difference between them currently okay if i go from 1.4 to a higher gamma that is a less compressible gas what we are finding is the beta is higher first observation if the gas is less compressible beta increases for weak shock solution i go to the strong shock solution it's the opposite if i become more compressible beta increases previously it was when it became less compressible beta increased for weak shock in strong shock if i become more compressible that is i go from higher gamma to lower gamma i'm going to increase my beta it's going opposite they have different trends and one more important thing the theta critical theta critical is higher for more compressible gas three different observations we want to explain okay of course i don't need to explain the weak shock strong shock difference currently in this course it's not really important all you need to know is that the curve shifts up by itself as gamma decreases that's enough for this course i just want to give a little more in case you want to learn a little more okay and the same trend happens for every mach number it's the same thing i don't need to show it again but anyway i'll just show it once more for mach number 3 for weak shock solution let's say i'll pick theta deflection of 20 degrees 
what I am seeing here is as I increase gamma my beta increases, if I go to strong shock solution as I decrease gamma from 1.6 to 1.4 to 1.3 my beta increases, okay. this is our trend currently. Now, we will try and explain each of these three points, of course, the third point was that theta critical increases. The first one is easy to explain the weak shock, so I am picking a particular case and we have theta less than theta max or theta critical whichever way people call it differently, I am going to have a shock, this is my original beta for one particular gamma value, this is our theta. Now, I am saying the gamma changes to more compressible gas which is gamma decreases, if I pick gamma decreases, okay, let us call this one less compressible, if it is more compressible then I am going to have lesser gamma in one way of thinking about it my gamma is lower speed of sound will be lower, if I think about it that way the wave from here does not go this far into the flow against the flow it will go lesser and it will end up with this angle, beta will drop, that is one explanation I can give, beta prime more compressible gas. Okay. Another way of looking at it, the flow incoming is so fast that if the gas is more compressible, it will compress whatever is behind the flow, behind the shock to a smaller volume or if I put streamlines like the way we explained things before, previously the streamlines were like this and the gap between streamlines decreased by this much, that is it is getting compressed by so much fraction. If I draw this particular shock streamlines, the other one does not exist for this shock. I will draw the same width at the beginning. Now, you find that from this gap to this gap it is much smaller, that is it is more compressed, the fluid element is more compressed, if it is coming from between this gap the same width as this, it is much more compressed here than in this case, okay. that is it is more compressible, so it is getting compressed, easy way to think about it, okay. this is very simple to explain, okay. this is our weak shock solution, I will write it weak here, strong shock solution is completely counterintuitive, okay. can be explained only if you understand molecular gas dynamics what the molecule does with the energy given to it, okay. we will try to explain without that as much as possible, but I am going to use one statement from there, I have to keep the same theta roughly, same theta. And now I am going to say it is a strong solution, in a strong solution we already observed that the kinetic energy of the fluid is converted to pressure energy and temperature energy or enthalpy much higher than in the case of weak oblique shock. Okay. So, we are going to use that statement mainly, I am going to say this is my original less compressible situation. and uh, we already know the answer that it is going to be higher, we are supposed to explain that. Okay. If I just make one statement and you just believe me for sure, that is if it is a strong shock that is forming, we are interested in making, making P2 by P1 very high compared to the weak shock it is supposed to be very very high, that is what we observed last time also anyway, okay. it is supposed to be very high. To make it very high that is I have to form pressure energy a lot, where is the energy coming from? It should be from the fluid, so it is coming from the bulk kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the fluid element. Okay. So, there should be a lot more kinetic energy to be processed, if I decrease my beta my u1 normal decreases which means 
I won't have enough kinetic energy incoming across the shock. Okay. So I have to increase my beta so that increase beta, which will give me u1 normal increasing, which means I have now lot of kinetic energy that I can process from the shock and produce the high pressure. Okay. This is all dependent on one statement I said I have to increase P2 by P1 to very high value. Okay. We would not explain that part currently here, we will just believe that that is so. Okay. If I assume that then things are all fine, so we will keep it that way and move on. Uh, I will go to the next case which is in the front the theta max, theta max is changing. Okay. So, I will keep parts of this board and continue. Let us say I have a body which has theta greater than theta critical, theta greater than theta max or theta critical. Okay, people call it theta max or theta critical. Get used to it. Okay. Now let us consider a case where it is only slightly greater. This is not usually used in math, but I'll just tell this. This is not a common sign. Okay, I'm just saying it is approximately equal but slightly greater. I'll pick such a case. And I have this particular condition, this is for less compressible gas. Okay. And it has to go through a subsonic solution and then go adjust itself along the wall and get out, that is all we did already in today's class. If the gas is more compressible, what should happen? This gap can now be decreased, why? Similar to weak shock answer, the flow incoming can push the wave more back and keep the gas behind more compressed, keep the gas behind more compressed because it is more compressible, it is possible to compress, let us compress it, okay. that is what it does. So, when that happens, flow can get attached, I am just giving you a possibility, I cannot give you exact answer because nobody has proven it exactly this way. Okay. I will just give you that there is a possibility of this getting compressed to a point where it gets attached. And once it gets attached, there is a proof that a weak shock solution is stable. So, the solution will automatically go to from this curved shock to a straight line shock, it will automatically go there. We do not need to worry about that part. Okay. That proof came up only like 2 years back, it is very recent in research. We are still fresh in solving this kind of problems. Okay. So, it goes to this situation. So, I am just using this one statement if the gas is more compressible the shock will want to compress it more. I have been telling the statement from normal shock time onwards. Okay. We will just keep on telling the statement again and again, so that it is in your brain. So, overall what is happening, My, it is now attached shock. For this to get detached now, I have to increase my angle much higher, so that it will go and sit outside. Right. This is not the critical angle for this particular Mach number, if the gas is more compressible. That is what we are seeing here. Now, we will go back to that and we will just probably we will have to stop it with this. I will draw it like this. I will not worry about where the peak is shifting, actually, the peak will shift slightly to the right, we will ignore that. Okay. Currently, we want I do not I do not know the explanation for that, we will ignore that. Okay. All I can say is we explained that weak shock. Uh, this is less compressible, this is more compressible. Of course, you have to draw it again probably on your notes, but I am just giving it to you like this. Uh, less compressible, more compressible. When I go to higher gamma, it is less compressible, lower gamma is more compressible. I am having some curve like this. Okay, of course, I am going to give whatever I am putting on the screen on the website, so that uh, people who are use, watching YouTube can avail it later. They can print it out and keep it for themselves anyway. Okay. If it is a weak shock solution, we find that beta decreases, we proved it. Okay. If it is a strong shock solution, we proved that as I become more compressible, it goes that way, beta increases. Okay. And do you notice that there is no change at 0 deflection, okay. there is no change at 0 deflection. Of course, if it is mu, 
there is no shock if this is a zero strength shock okay so it just goes through straight there need not be any deflection normal shock again it's just perpendicular change and there is no difference in beta really there cannot be any difference beta is 90 degrees normal less normal of course there will be a difference in p2 by p1 values slightly we want to worry about it. you know that p2 by p1 formula has gamma in it so if i change gamma gamma will have an effect on p2 by p1 let's not worry about that part also the main thing i want to show in this plot is theta critical has now substantially increased okay it's not very small number if i increase my mark number this change will be really really drastic okay you're going to see a huge change up here of course when i go to very high mark numbers like more than 10 or 15 this change may not be very high it may saturate to some particular value okay that's hypersonic limits everything goes to crazy there so i'm going to have something like this here okay if i had a case where my theta was this if my gamma was higher it will have a detached shock if the gamma is lower i will have an attached shock this is related to compressibility okay so do we have a solution for solving flow behind a normal uh, bow shock yet not really okay we cannot solve it for a bow shock we'll just leave it like this uh, we still have a little bit of stuff left in oblique shocks we won't deal with it today we'll wait for next class okay that will be how will i solve problems that's one aspect other aspect is what if this shock meets something else these are the two aspects we have to talk about we'll talk about it next class okay see you people next class